I'm Holger Hampf and this is the Service Design Show. I'm Mark Fontaine and welcome to the Service Design Show. Uh, today we have a special episode as we're uh, here live at the Service Design Conference in Amsterdam that is taking place on October 27th and 28th. Uh, I have a special guest, uh, one of the keynotes, actually the first keynote on the opening day, uh, Holger Hanf. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Holger, um, you work at BMW. Could you tell the people a bit, what do you do at BMW and why, why a service design conference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I work at BMW in uh, Munich and um, I work for uh, the design division of BMW. So that's the design department out of Munich. Um, Adrian von Hoydonk, the head of BMW Group, has a team of uh, people around him that are responsible for the brands. Um, Mini, Rolls-Royce, BMW obviously and Motorrad. And uh, I'm uh, responsible for uh, the development of the user interface and the digital experience in the car across brands. So what brought me to the service design show? Um, well, originally an invitation from Eric. Um, Who was one of the previous guests also on the show. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, um, we, we started to talk and, and he found obviously uh, a great interest in mobility and the automotive industry. So uh, I agreed to uh, open the show yesterday. Cool. Holger, um, mobility and uh, car manufacturers maybe aren't the first companies that people think about when they think of service design. I'm really curious, uh, can you do, you, do you remember your very first encounter with the term service design, with the profession service design? When did you hear about it? Well, I would say that was long before I joined uh, BMW as um, the, the, the car uh, or the car division of BMW. Um, I was at DesignWorks um, in, in the USA. And uh, we've had multiple clients besides uh, BMW as our core client. Um, one of the clients we um, built a very strong we built a very strong relationship with was uh, Hewlett Packard HP. And uh, HP back then uh, was in the business of producing printers, for example, uh, hardware, um, inkjet printers you have at your home yeah, yeah, or in the business. Yeah, yeah. But um, they themselves started to. Uh, have a line under the email say like uh, uh, please consider printing this email yeah. uh, and uh, that was the end of uh, it pretty much mm -hmm. um, so we've talked a lot about service design and how you can provide uh, printing services for example that was some 12 years ago yeah and uh, um, I, I guess a lot has happened since then right in, yeah. in the terms of service design how how, uh, how is um, service design now related in your profession because you said uh, you're into the user interface department user experience mm -hmm. uh, how do people talk within your department about service design is it a topic that is on the table i would still say that uh, the the term service design is not um, yet established in the way that uh, i experience it here at the, at the conference um, However, we talk about it every day. We talk about uh, how we can um, uh, how we can improve or actually get to a level of service quality in the same way that we reach with our products. Right. Yeah. That, that because that was one of the highlights for me during your presentation. You, of course, have a pre premium brand and you have craftsmanship in making fantastic cars. It, it's uh, the same ambition towards creating the same level of services, right? That, that, yeah. That's interesting. How does a BMW service look like and feel like? Mm -hmm. I guess it must be right. an interesting uh, time within a, a car manufacturer. Well, it is very interesting. I mean, it is not only because of the introduction of service design, but it is also uh, just uh, because of many changes happening around us uh, in the terms of individual mobility, for example. Uh, and um, I've heard some other people already say that uh, the car industry will change more drastically over the next 10 years than it has changed in the last 100 years. So we're basically, we have to um, be very open um, to kind of um, uh, take a look at these changes and see how much they can influence us yeah. or will influence yeah. us. Yeah, and they will influence us like you already said. Olga, uh, as part of the service design show, we're going to do the format that we do in every episode, and that is that uh, you have a bunch of question starters, and I have a 
few topics that you suggested we should talk about. So um, let's just start and I'll pick one of your topics and invite you to, to pick a question starter that goes along with that. And then we'll see what kind of conversation we have from that. Right? Very well. All right. Um, interesting. Let me, uh, let me start with the one that um, uh, puzzles me the most. And this is the one uh, I'll show it to the audience. And if you can pick a paper, a question starter that goes along with that one. So I've picked a topic of freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, which question starter goes along with that one? So much. Let's start with an easy one. Why? So, all right. Why freedom? And what do you mean? That's maybe the first question. Uh, well, uh, I think, you know, the, 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 the word freedom seemed interesting to me to talk about because it is um, kind of an intrinsic uh, human value. Uh, we want to feel free in our lives. And uh, I think um, applied to the automotive um, field, uh, the car always um, symbolized freedom to us. I think uh, it, it, it um, allowed us to go wherever we wanted to go, um, to go to places we, we cannot reach by public transportation or by bike or by foot. Um, the car in, a, in of itself in, a, in, in, in my garage was always kind of also a, um, um, a product of achievement in mm. a certain way and provided freedom. Mm. Uh, when it comes to today's uh, uh, context, I think um, the freedom is sometimes um, limited, more limited, because of uh, things happening around us. Let's uh, think about traffic mm -hmm. and think about urbanization, um, growing population and so on. And the car is not uh, necessarily always uh, only the element of freedom. Um, so my question, um, or the question I was uh, asking myself is kind of how can we extend the, the, the feeling of, of freedom also uh, potentially through services? Yeah. Um, and yeah. That, so so that's, that's maybe your bigger design challenge at this moment. How do we design for freedom? Is that a question that... Yeah, for people to feel free and to that, feel independent. Yeah. I think that's very important. And, there, and, a, and a car can be a tool or a utility that provides freedom, right? Correct, yeah. So w what, um, what are the questions you have around this topic? So wh wh what, what, what keeps you awake when you think about freedom? Um, well, you know, I, I, uh, I work daily with uh, digital experiences, user interfaces, uh, also complex applications that allow you to um, do things faster, more efficiently, and hopefully also with more fun. Uh, think about a navigation system, mm. think about accessing music in the car. Um, but on the other hand, I also think that uh, we are currently in a time where technology is sometimes providing more of a burden than it actually delivers freedom. So uh, The mobile phone. Correct. Instance, right? Yeah. 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 We're, we're kind of, some people say we, we're tethered to this thing. We're babysitting the phone in our po pockets. Uh, and. Um, yeah, I want to kind of see how we can overcome this um, perception of, of burden mm. and uh, where it would really start um, uh, that technology enables us uh, to do uh, things again and, and, and really kind of sets us free from kind of yeah, babysitting a device. Um, yeah, where, where does it get in the way, the technology correct, exactly? Yes. And I yeah. think uh, uh, and it's, it's in the way way too much at this moment, right? And, right. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. And we see already, I think, a tiredness with people. You know, people are starting to delete apps from their phones. And um, I, I think, you know, um, some people at the conference talked about filling the gaps. And uh, I'm, I'm doubtful that we want to fill more gaps, but maybe uh, kind of look at the core experiences and make them better and deliver. Maybe technology should be more and more in the background instead of in our face. Right? Absolutely. And I can imagine that if you're uh, you're working daily with cars and interfaces. It's very tempting to put technology uh, right in, on, on the front stage, to put it in your face to show that technology is there. Correct, yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, to be somewhat self-critical, um, <clears throat> we have put technology in the car for the sake of technology and not necessarily only um, to, to, um, mm. to help the, the user, the customer to, to um, use the product more efficiently or better. 
Um, and uh, I think we're now at that point where technology is potentially or could potentially move more into the background and be become uh, an enabling um, uh, thing rather than something that um, asks me to update every 10 minutes. Technology should be much more humble, I guess. I right? think so too, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's move on to the second uh, topic, uh, Holger, because time is flying by and we have much more interesting things to talk about. Um, this is a topic called integration. 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 Mm -hmm. Which question starter goes along with uh, okay. the topic of integration? Um, how much? How much? Well, the answer is easy. Conversation can be short, 100%. And what do you mean with integration? That's um, uh, with integration, question. and this is also related to the conference um, and, and the keynotes we've, uh, we've listened to for the last two days, um, we have a room full of service designers and uh, on the other hand, you know, I, I'm uh, working with product designers every day, with automotive, with transportation designers. And uh, there's also um, the, uh, the discipline of um, uh, brand marketing and, and, uh, and brand uh, definition. And I very strongly believe that um, all three uh, disciplines have to work very closely together and integrate to achieve an ultimate experience. So it's, it's product design, it's service design, and it's marketing? Are those three? The yeah, marketing, branding, uh, branding yeah, brand strategy, yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what are you finding so far? Is, it, is that a thing that happens naturally or is it hard work to get them to work together? Um, it's, it's hard work. Um, it's happening. It's happening at BMW. We're talking to each other. Um, however, you need to ensure that um, <clears throat> everyone, um, everyone's um, expectations and desires are addressed mm -hmm. in this collaboration. And um, I think at the end, I'm talking very often about harmonization. Um, and we all know that uh, on, a, on a customer journey you have multiple touch points and if one is uh, a really bad experience it, it, has, um, yeah, it has an effect on everything else, on the entire journey. So kind of by picking these points that are either brand strategy or brand positioning that are kind of how the product feels and also how you design a service, uh, you have to make sure that all of them are at an equal uh, level of quality, very high. What's needed to get them to be on the same page? Um, well, it needs, uh, f first of all, that each of the disciplines delivers um, a, a very high level of quality in of itself. Um, and again, with BMW, you see that the products, they deliver already. Kind of, I think we've reached a point where kind of the car might be perfect as a product, mm -hmm. as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, with electrification, it might be more perfect. But um, <clears throat> I think each of these things uh, have reached, um, uh, these disciplines have reached a high level of quality. Now it is about kind of linking them together and, and, and uh, making them work together as a system. Mm -hmm. But um, naively, as a, I would say, I'd say these people have a design mindset already in them. It should be pretty easy to get them to work uh, along uh, and achieve the same goals, but hmm. it's, it's, it's more tough in real life? Um, well, I, I think, again, we are at an interesting point in time where uh, when you look at service design, uh, we're just about to really understand how to put the customer or the user at the center of our thinking. Um, again, it's, it's almost this process of moving from a product-centric to, uh, to a customer-centric um, type of work or, or kind of way to work, so to say. And um, we ourselves are very often surprised by, um, by, by um, witnessing what people actually do in a car. Uh, not only driving, I tell you that. And um, <clears throat> so service design, a user-centric approach can help us to better understand what people really do. We observe people, qualitative research mm -hmm. tells us how we can design our product even better to address these different um, so, so use, is, use is, cases. It's maybe uh, design research and qualitative research um, a key element into getting everyone aligned because I can imagine once you have insights from real users, it 
it's it's become so obvious that you need to mm -hmm. work on this together. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it, it's giving us a much greater degree of insight. Um, and we all know, coming from a time of, let's say, online surveys or filling boxes, uh, you don't really get this kind of deep insight. And uh, witnessing people observing, doing drive-alongs, for example, uh, tells us much more how people actually um, interact with their product, use it, and so on. Yeah. 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 How it fits in their daily life. Yeah. All right. Take the example of a cell phone, you know, that's always out. People are texting while they drive. People are using um, navigation systems on top of their um, built-in navigation mm -hmm. systems. So what do we have to do to uh, prevent also um, scenarios that are uh, quite unsafe? Uh, because that's important mm. <laughs> in the automotive yeah. context. Yeah, yeah, unsafe scenarios. Um, okay, let's do the third topic, uh, Holger. Uh, sure. <clears throat> and it's a fun topic because it's the topic of joy. You, you've chosen. Okay, you some saved that for the. <laughs> you've chosen some surprising uh, topics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how can we? How can we? And how can we? How can we what? How can we um, achieve joyful experiences, maybe? Um, and yeah, again, I, I chose this word because uh, joy is at the center of our um, a set of brand attributes. Uh, we have at BMW several um, brand attributes like uh, sportiness, dynamic. Mm. Um, and, and joy is at the center of it. And I think, you know, if you, if you look at the BMW um, subline, sheer driving pleasure in English, Freude am Fahren in Deutsch, uh, we always try to deliver a joyful experience with our products. If it's no fun to drive a car, then, yeah, okay, that's not it's ours. It's just a utility. Yeah, it's just a utility. So, um, while I think utility, there's nothing wrong with it, we always want to combine it with mm. a joyful experience. And um, <clears throat> obviously one of the things that um, also keeps me busy is how to translate a joyful driving experience to a joyful digital experience, for example. Why digital? Um, you know, I think um, part of the reason why we um, continue to kind of use our mo mobile devices because they are actually, they deliver a, um, um, a certain uh, type of joy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking a lot about Apple products and how fun it is to take photos, to share photos and, and other things. And Apple continuously drive, drives um, this notion of um, fun in using mm. uh, these applications. And if it's no fun, you know, toss them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In automotive, I think it's similar. I think many of the systems have been initially designed to fulfill a purpose and they're good. Uh, again, getting from A to B quicker is an important yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, moment or task. But um, I'm, I'm also looking uh, in how far a user interface or an interaction with the car can deliver joy, can put a smile on your face, really. That's, that's, I can imagine that that's really changing. As in, uh, if I look at myself, how I perceive a car is mm -hmm. not per se, uh, when I look at the car, it's not per se a joyful memory that comes mm -hmm. to, to mind, but it's, mm -hmm. it's more of the utilitarian mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, maybe it's, it's just me or, or generation, but do you see a shift in there that you need to really adapt and change things? Uh, I wouldn't talk about a shift, but I find, uh, I find it and I talked in my keynote yesterday morning about uh, opportunities in the future and I've named a couple yesterday. One is autonomous driving, yeah. the self-driving car, and the other one is electromobility. And uh, I think both can deliver new um, uh, joyful uh, experiences. Um, I, I think, for example, uh, driving a, a a small electric car uh, like the i3 is, is, is a lot of fun and it is a completely different experience from driving a combustion engine. I showed a video yesterday and you literally see in the, pe in the people's faces how much fun it is to drive quietly, zero emission in an urban environment. Mm. 
And how to kind of extend that into other experiences around peripheral experiences is, is, is uh, super interesting. Yeah, because that, that's, uh, that's what puzzles me, because right now you're as BMW, you have the option to move beyond the car, I guess, right? We, you have the, the, the metal box, yeah. and then you have maybe things on your phone or mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of stuff you develop more, but that, there's a, a, a whole new playing field is opening up. Yeah, you know, we're, we're starting to talk more about uh, mobility needs and desires in, in, in a larger kind of uh, context than just the time you spend in the car. Yeah. You know, I think we all have our calendars organized and we know where we have to be during the day. And maybe a small portion of that day you also spend in the car. Mm. But how this system all works together and, and how you organize your day with transportation and with moving around, that's very interesting. What, what does it do with the capabilities that are inside the organization? Because It means uh, also expansion. It means uh, kind of you need, you need to look at your competencies you have in-house. You, you need to kind of uh, partner more. I think mm. there, are, there are definitely things that we are not set up uh, to do perfectly, but others are. So where can we partner? Where, where can we talk to people that kind of are already um, like pros in this, yeah. in this uh, game? Mm. Mm. Interesting. Holger, uh, we finish the show always with two, uh, two questions that are not on paper. And uh, the first one is uh, when people are approaching when I'm curious if they do and they say, Holger, I want to get better at service design. Or maybe mm -hmm. in your case, user experience design. What is, what, what is your ultimate tip? What do you say to them? Uh, well, number one, I think um, since we've talked about integration, I think it is a lot about um, developing a um, kind of a, a, um, a sensibility for the other disciplines, especially in our case, the product in of itself. Kind of how can you connect to that? How can you create meaningful uh, services potentially around the object, peripheral to the object? Um, so I think. Um, being anticipatory and being sensible um, uh, towards uh, other uh, things that play a role in this larger system is very important. Don't look uh, at service design through kind of a, um, a very um, kind of narrow viewing field of view. Number one, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, an important thing because being here in Amsterdam and being sur with, surrounded with service designers is really easy to, to be live in the bubble, I guess, right? And uh, think that the whole world looks like this. And make, making the bridges, that's what you're basically saying, right? Br creating bridges. Making the bridge and also uh, maybe not always, um, I, I'm, I was very um, taken by the, by the fact of new uh, work processes in service design. I think they, so, uh, like service design is suggesting um, new ways of collaborating, new ways of exchanging data with each other and knowledge with each other. And um, here's obviously um, um, something to learn for us. Uh, you know, I, I think there's a certain openness and uh, kind of a certain um, openness to, to share things, mm -hmm. which um, I, haven't, I haven't so far felt in, in product design. Mm -hmm. Well, I, that's a good thing, I'd say. We need to keep that as a community. Holger, to, to wrap this up, um, you gave a lot of insights, uh, but I, I'm, you must have big questions. You must, uh, you must walk out the door here, be on the plane to, to back to Munich, and think, how am I going to do this? And what, what is the question? What is the question that's currently on your mind? Um, well, I mean, one question is how can we better integrate service design and continue on this path of um, kind of a. Uh, yeah, um, uh, approaching mobility as a, as a system, individual mobility. How can we do that uh, and still continue on our path of delivering joyful experiences? Um, so I think it, it is about picking the right building blocks uh, for the system. And um, obviously I'm thinking a lot about which are the blocks that I need. Interesting. And if people have ideas about that, then feel free to comment on uh, on the episode. Holger, uh, thanks for being part of the show. Um, before you leave, we have a small gift 
that we've been handing out to some of the uh, guests who were on the previous episodes. And it's, uh, you, you've seen it already. It's a unique example. And uh, I want to hand over your, uh, this is the other one. Yeah, let's. Get one with my name on it. Okay. You get a personalized example of the, uh, the surf design helmet. And uh, like I've told the other people who've been on the episode, use it however you want it to, uh, to be used, but uh, wear it with pride, I'd say. Okay, so. I'll, I'll um, show up at work then next week with this helmet on uh, People won't confuse uh, you as, as the creative designer, but we'll see you as a, as a hard worker. That's, that's the whole purpose. <laughs> Thank purpose you very much. It's uh, wonderful. Nice color. <laughs> Thank you, Olga. Thank you.